Um, I'm going to introduce our expert today. Dr. Maria is a mathematician and she makes math fun and interesting and relates it to the world around us and makes us realize how amazing math is and how it helps to explain so much that we see in our lives. So welcome, Dr. Maria. Hello. Hi, everyone. And I see people are putting patterns in the chat. Keep doing that. Uh, I will keep an eye on the chat. So you want to say anything at any time, just go ahead. We love uh, people talking and it's, it's more uh, joyful this way. So I want to introduce myself, just show a few slides about me and uh, I'll do so right now uh, by screen sharing a tiny little presentation. So uh, it will be one minute uh, and then we'll do an activity. Before we do the presentation, let's do a gear check so you can get your beautiful stuff. So what we need today is some paper, uh, any paper you have, just regular one, something colorful like pencils or markers because we always make mathematics with color, right? And uh, we also will be using scissors. So get your favorite scissors from wherever they are hiding in the house. They are always hiding, I know. So let us uh, find them out. Okay. And if you have a video camera and are okay to share, I will invite you to share. So um, your handicraft, uh, what you make, uh, mathematics is what you make. Of it. So I'm going to talk about myself for a sec. Um, here is my presentation from beginning. Yes. Okay. I am Dr. Maria Drushkova and I grew up in Ukraine. You can hear it probably. I am here in Cary, North Carolina in my home office. Math is what you make it is the motto of my company, which I started about 25 years ago called Natural Math. And we do a lot of math circles, which are groups of people kind of like we are together now doing mathematics for love and having joyful time of it. We do a lot of events at Natural Mass, uh, STEM volunteering. Uh, this is probably one of our best known articles in the Atlantic, an interview about five-year-olds doing calculus because we make mathematics more accessible, that becomes possible. And National Mass Festival is going to happen next year again, online actually, so everyone can easier join than before even. Uh, so we also do, um, at Natural Mass, we do some uh, development, game development and curriculum development for places like uh, NASA Virtual Magnet School uh, and write different projects like that. And one of the favorite things we, I do is uh, publishing books. We make them with a lot of love. And they are all uh, creative commons. In fact, uh, natural mass is one of creative commons uh, featured um, organizations uh, for education. Uh, what it means in practice that parents, teachers, and anyone can get the book in electronic form for free and use it for educational projects uh, for free as well. And that's some of our principles, but that's a lot of reading, so I will escape from that now and stop sharing. Um, and when I find the button and we'll start working. Okay, so the first thing we do, I wanted to kind of start easy and awesome at the same time. So just get a piece of paper. And if you want to turn your video on so I see what you're doing, you can, I'll um, 
um, I'll be in gallery view, you can be, of course, in speaker view. Um, and with that piece of paper, uh, fold it in two. So that's an easy thing to do for most people, help your children if they need help, depending on wh where they are. And so on, on this piece of paper, I'd like to, for you to choose and draw a thing, uh, your favorite bug. So before we start, would you put the name of your favorite bug in the chat? <laughs> Just something you, you like, one of the favorites. I know we have many. Mm, rubber fly. Okay, ladybug. Write your favorite bug there, grasshopper. Uh, butterfly, bumblebee, ladybug, big-headed fly. So different people. Now, I want to invite you to picture your bug and then to draw half of it on that paper. Now, most bugs are uh, symmetric sideways, the vast majority of them. So I'm going to demonstrate what I mean. Uh, by drawing a half a butterfly. So I usually start with the body and I um, simplify it a lot. Um, so um, the scientists will forgive me if I don't get the thorax right and so on. Um, so I like to draw the body first still and a big eye, I just like big eyes. And see how I drew half of it? Right, draw half of the thing. And then I draw the butterfly wings. Again, just half of it. So imagine your butterfly, if you, that's what you're drawing, just sitting on somewhere and you're looking at it sideways. Okay. And here I am and I drew half of my butterfly and I'm more or less done. I don't know if I can do an antenna, but let us see. Right here, a simple antenna, but just one because we're doing half of it. Okay, um, now here is something interesting. Even if you don't draw much and do something simple, um, just geometric shapes, when you do that, we're going to cut it out next. So help your children if they need to uh, need help. Um, and when we unfold, it becomes like 10 times more beautiful. Watch it. <laughs> so um, I am going to cut it. It's a simple drawing. Um, yours, maybe even simpler, maybe a geometric shape uh, of, of some sort, and yet, when we cut it out, some cognitive magic makes it pretty to us. Now, there is a information processing theory of beauty, which tells us that beauty is actually secretly a mechanism for us to be able to store information in our mind more efficiently. So patterns are beautiful to us because a pattern can be remembered easier than just a mess of things. And check this out. All the information in my whole butterfly is in this half, but we'll see what happens. Are you ready for me to open it? Okay, so I have two wings here. How many wings total will my butterfly have? Okay, uh, if somebody has a toddler here, ask them that, please. <laughs> okay, and um, now I'm gonna open it. One, if I can figure out how. My butterfly is shy and here. Here it is. And see how seeing, yay, 
Carrie, talk about <laughs> yours. I tried drawing a robber fly, but I wasn't sure how to draw only half a robber fly. So it kind of turned out like that. Interesting. So maybe not, yeah, so maybe more of a, a damsel fly, <laughs> something like that. So it, it has folded wings. Yeah, so well, they're kind like of a... over their back. So it's uh-huh. Like, yeah, he's kind of cute. It is very elegant. Okay, who else would like to share? If you'd like to share your creation, uh, to make that happen, uh, just say something in chat, and I will spotlight you. You can turn on your video, right? People can, right? Yeah, I don't think. Let me see. Or should I turn the video on for them? Um, yeah, I think we might have to do that. That's okay. I'll do that. So yeah. if anyone would like to share what they made, uh, would, you, would, you tur- uh, would you say something in chat and I'll turn your video on? Yeah, you can also go to reactions and raise your hand. Yeah, I'm ne- or, um, mm-hmm. Okay, so PD says they will, okay. or maybe do like a thumbs up or something, Let or just me- put it in the chat. Um, okay. okay. Here we go. <gasps> let me I, uh, let me spotlight this, so you can tell a story about symmetry, if you want to do so. Yay. Um, so here is one more cool thing we are going to do with that. So so far the word I use was symmetry. And the type of symmetry that we see here is line symmetry. And of course, if we search for line symmetry in nature, we see so many things, which I am going to share in a second. I just did an image search. And that's something to do when you want to relax and uh, just see beautiful stuff. So there are a lot of insects, uh, beautiful. There was a symmetry in nature photography context. Wow. Something interesting to do. And of course, a lot of bugs are symmetric. So butterflies are prominent because they are so pretty uh, and obviously symmetric visually. So here we will do one more thing that is a different kind of pattern. Okay, ready for the next activity? Yay. Get your markers this time, your drawing stuff. And you can use your creation from before. That's what I will do. Or you can draw a new shape. You can even draw a simple shape like a triangle or square. Um, I wouldn't use a circle for this one. Uh, I would use anything, but uh, so I will use my butterfly wing actually for this one. Yeah. Wow. Miranda, can you talk to us about your discovery that you put in chat? Yeah, so um, we were playing a game and I came across a moth called um, a North Island zebra moth. It is um, only native, only found on the, on New Zealand. And um, it is only one out of two known insects, out of all the insects with wings that have asymmetrical wing patterns. Um, and the other one is a type of mantid. So I thought that was really amazing. And it's a beautiful moth, black and white. And it's even hard to tell that it's asymmetrical. What, uh, say again, please, what's the name North, of that? Yeah, North Island Zebra Moth. Whoa. Interesting. So sometimes it's not symmetrical. It's just yeah, wild so it, like this. This one is. Uh, um, but I don't think that's it. It's, it's the first, yeah, the first images that should, that one, yeah. If you look, you have to look really closely to see that it's not exactly right. symmetrical. I I can see the differences. So it's it's like spot the difference. The sizes are different, the shapes, some of the shapes. Oh, wow. And we can look at it as a puzzle, S- find the subtle, diff- but but it's, it's the only one of the two. Wow. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so we are going to celebrate this by making the next pattern not quite symmetrical. <laughs> okay. I am going to use this here wing for my shape. So you can use a part of your creation or you can draw a new shape on paper for this one, or whichever you choose. And here is how we do this activity. This activity is about a type of fractal. I'll put the word in chat. Okay. And um, fractal is a structure that's um, similar to itself, but we'll see. So first thing you do is you look at your shape really closely and imagine circles inside and then use your imagination to draw the biggest circle you can fit in here possibly in your shape. So I think I'll use green um, or actually let me do black and white to celebrate that beautiful moss we just looked at. So uh, let me see, I'm going to draw a really big circle that just fits inside my shape. And of course, um, by hand drawing, the circle will may not be perfect. And see, it touches at the ends. And if I, I don't know if I could make it any bigger. And then I do the same thing with the shape that's left. So there is something left of that wing and I'm going to fit the biggest circle I possibly can into that here space outside. Okay. So far so good. Well, now I have smaller spaces left around. I'm going to keep doing this. Whatever is the biggest circle I draw, can draw on, the, on my wing. Let me try and do that. And you can keep asking yourself the same exact question. Mathematicians do that a lot. They ask a question and then ask it again and again. So in this little triangle I have, what's the biggest circle I can fit? Let me draw it here. The circles are getting smaller for me. And this is a meditative, calm activity. So this is what I have so far. And then there is tiny shape, so I'll have to do tiny circles. And there are more of them, of course. There is just, there was just one big giant circle in the middle, but tiny circles fit everywhere. And if you, are doing this now, you're probably noticing some things. So I, I'd like to pause and be quiet for about 30 seconds and ask people to look at their meditative activity and just notice something. Okay, so I'm going to spotlight Carrie, who did a different thing. She did a triangle and uh, that's her circles. Okay, um, any, anyone else would like to show what they created? You can uh, raise your hand or you can type something in chat. And while we're waiting for that, I'd like everyone to type at least one word, something else, or everyone who wants to, and uh, type in chat, what was just one thing you noticed 
So we do have a raised hand and we'll look at this now. Meanwhile, everyone type in chat what you noticed about your fractal. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you to unmute too. And uh, okay, <laughs> so some, some feelings, um, mathematics creates all kinds of feelings, likes, dislikes, and all, all, everything in between. It's a complex thing. So this, this thing, and I'm going to share screen again to, um, to look at uh, this type of fractals that just, we just made. It's called Apollonian gasket. Okay, I'll, I'll screen share in a second. Um, okay, where is it? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, okay, here we are. Uh, and actually, you can see that most things on my screen are circles. I, I told you not to make a circle, but uh, circles uh, have a lot of freedom in them. And um, I really like to do that with weird shapes like triangles or butterfly wings. And you do see some of that repeating structure in nature or in pancakes as the case maybe, or uh, tattoos. Um, but let me try to find uh, Apollonian gasket in nature, uh, not nature, nature. and um, and I'm not finding some of it, but in molecules. Um, so that is a more artificial structure, an artistic one. Some, um, see, you, you see, even when I added the word nature, it didn't bring up all the photographs like symmetry did. So I want to make some fractals next that we can find in nature. And uh, let's proceed, let, uh, okay. Oh, you did want to un unmute, it just wouldn't let you. Okay, so sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we try that again so people have their voice? Okay. Uh, I can ask to unmute. Um, so, um, did you want to talk to us again? Yeah, sorry okay. about that. I thought you didn't want to. <laughs> but once you give permission once, you won't let me do it again. And he was talking and I wanted to mute so we didn't interrupt you. So Okay, okay. so okay. Uh, so um, I want people, it's very important in mathematics to share your feelings. So <laughs> what is this art did you not like? That's what an important like question. Picture. That's what she wants to know. What, what did you not like about this? Because it looks weird. Why does it look weird? Because I made a mistake. Why is it a mistake? What's the mistake? I don't I can we do the video okay. again? <laughs> okay, so one child just says it looks weird. Oh, video. Okay. Okay. Okay, so one child. Are we there yet? I can't see myself. Are we there? Oh, yep. oh my goodness. Yeah, we see. Oh, oh my goodness. So here is the thing. You can choose to make it even weirder. Sometimes you do, or yeah. you can choose to make it less weird, and that's an interesting mathematical choice. Weird, to weird or not to weird. I'll show you a couple of really weird things that freak people out sometimes. Check this out. Is this weird? It is weird. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. That looks like bugs. Look at this. This is kind of wild, too. Yeah, it looks like spiders. So you can dial up and down the weirdness of your mass until you like, until you like it weird enough. This one is made out of coins, okay, and numbers, and this is like a brain. Okay, so people make it less weird, more weird, and it's all um, a choice. Okay. We are going to make a fractal next. This one is weird and not very natural. A lot of things in mathematics are not in nature, but we are going to um, make the one next that is in nature. And for that one, I am going to 
okay, so draw a small bug and we'll make really big antenna. That's the next craft. So I'm going to draw a little, um, a little beetle or something at the bottom of my page and just um, put the legs like no beetle has them, but it's okay. It's a sketch. <laughs> okay. So quick, quick sketch. And then I'm going to focus on, on the antenna, which I will make in a special way, in a branching way that's very special. So at first I will just make the antenna two stalks like, like that. Can you see this? Just the stock and the stock like normal bugs have. But then I'm gonna get weird. Ready to get weird, but not too weird. Not weirder than the nature, not like the last time, promise. Okay, so here is an interesting choice. I am going to make this branch kind of like a tree, kind of like some bug uh, antenna branch. But I am going to choose how many branches it has. We can do two again or three or four. Do not make too many because um, it takes forever to draw. So that's your interesting choice. I'm going to make it have three branches. Uh, so the point here has one, two, three, one, two, three. And then I'm going to change my color because it's easier to keep track this way. So here is what I do. Remember how we repeated, uh, how we repeated the circle thing again. We did the largest circle and then the largest that could fit in the remaining space. We'll do the repetition like that again. That's the word I used before, fractal. That's what they are, they're repeating things. So at the tip of every one of those antenna, I am going to make three branches yet again. So, like so. Makes sense, but then I have to repeat it on every tip. And that's when it gets cool and weird, but not too weird. That's right, Hayden, fractal. That's the word. Thank you for repeating it in the spirit of fractality. So I did one antenna so far. Am I done? So I had three and then I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, three of threes. I'm not done yet because it's a bug, so it has two of those. Okay, and that's what I am repeating. And that is another somewhat meditative activity. And so now I'm done with that. And I like to change my colors when I draw uh, so I know the levels stay different. So if I, if I keep going, I can get a lot of levels. So Sadie's uh, ex exclaiming exponents. Sadie, would you like to talk about exponents? Would you, would you like to, uh, to, to talk about that? to grab a microphone or camera. Okay. If so, say something in chat. Okay. But meanwhile, meanwhile, I, um, can keep going with that for the next level. So here is an interesting choice. How many levels do you make? And of course, you can keep going and going and going and going. And here is the next interesting choice. The next interesting choice is, okay, 
would you like to imagine me this little bug and its antenna just branching and branching and branching and branching all the way to infinity? Or would you rather not imagine such a weird thing? <laughs> Nothing, this is a very interesting choice. A lot of things in mathematics are infinite because mathematics is in the mind. Nothing whatsoever in nature is infinite, arguably. <laughs> but a lot of people conceive of nature, everything that is born in life nature, everything uh, comes to an end. So that's an interesting choice. When you draw, do you draw it naturally and just stop somewhere? Or do you imagine in your mind this going on and on and on to infinity? If you said to yourself now, mm -mm, I do not want to imagine infinity, you're probably an applied mathematician. <laughs> you like your things realistic and you want mathematics that is in life. If you wanted to keep imagining this thing, you were acting on this activity as a pure mathematician who likes to imagine things that aren't. Mathematics can be very fantastical. So uh, that's uh, one thing. Okay. Would that be a theoretical mathematician? Theoretical, pure, fantastical, I don't know. <laughs> there are different, um, in every field of math, you can have more applied and more theoretical, just like in science too and, and many other fields. Mathematics, though, what most, most people do not realize is the vast majority of existing mathematics, like 95% of it has no applications whatsoever. It just, it doesn't resemble anything in the natural world. So far, people find them sometimes. Uh, it's, it's really, uh, a, f uh, a lot of it is kind of like art in that it may or may not imitate nature. And it's lovely to see which piece does and which piece doesn't. So let me just see, let me screen share and do the same experiment about this one, but first let's spotlight Kerry and see Kerry's exponential bug. Okay, um, let's see that. Oh, that's cool. How many levels? One, two, three, four, five levels. That's a very branch. Now my hand hurts, so I think I'm done with levels. <laughs> okay. He's so, gonna, he's gonna, he senses pheromones, I think, <laughs> with, his, with his complicated antenna. Um, some, uh, so I'm going to do the same search, but for this type of fractal. Apollonian gasket wasn't there, but I, I will do tree fractal. That's the name of this thing, tree fractals that we just drew, and nature. And let's see what we come up with. Well, we come up with a lot of trees, of course, because they are fractals. This was one of my favorite pictures, is a tree as a lung, because human lungs are tree fractals. And somebody in the chat just said it reminds me of lungs. Mm -hmm. a, what a great observation. And it's a, uh, it's a metaphoric, um, uh, if we search for that, okay, if you don't want to see a lung, close your eyes. I'm going to search for a lung, okay. Uh, but you can see that it is built like a tree very much. Uh, it branches like that. And um, uh, I can search for tree fractal and bug and um, no, um, uh, maybe antenna um okay uh, let me just do fractal antenna okay um so I, and now i see engineering stuff okay and that tells you something uh so bugs do have that uh tree structure but um it's not, not easy to find necessarily um how about fractal ferns? That's one I like. <laughs> so, 
So it has some of that same structure. Uh, that's a human-made fern. It's not a photograph, but it looks so realistic to us because it's very similar to how a, an actual fern grows. Okay, so that's a photograph. So it has this branch, branch, and then branches of the branch. And I love how they curl. So that's the thing I do like. I do not like how they never flower. They're not flowering plants, <laughs> but I like the little uh, pods here. That's how they propagate. <laughs> okay. So we always can ask, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Um, uh, there is always something to like and not like. And emotions uh, help us remember. That's one thing. So I, I like to ask that question about mathematics. I will remember it better. So um, we made this happen and ferns are very fractal and tree fractals are in nature and including the bugs. Um, roots is fractal. Roots are, uh, so somebody commented that uh, all that surface area. And I'd like to comment on that. The branching structure has tremendous surface area within finite space. Actually, you can get the surface area as large as you want, all the way to infinity. Well, theoretically, not in nature, nothing is infinite in nature, but in mathematics, you can get a fractal with infinite search, uh, surface area. So if you like to imagine this going on and on and on and on, you are holding infinity in your hand right now. Your, your art is an infinity that is in your hand. Um, and the reason this structure is a lot in nature is because of the genetic coding. The only thing, one of the reasons, one of the reasons is maximizing areas, uh, surface areas and so on, like for, for plants and for lungs or, and for corals, of course. Corals are, uh, corals are fractal. But why, uh, one more reason is that thing about beauty uh, and information process, processing that I mentioned earlier. So um, corals are fractals. They are repeating structures like this. Um, for the same reason lungs are and trees are uh, that maximize the surface area for them to eat. <laughs> However, it also minimizes the genetic code because check this out, you only really need to code for the branch. When I was explaining to you what to do, I just said, Hey, you can, you can uh, branch in three and then you repeat the same thing. That's what it does in the genetic code. You only code that one repetition and then it keeps repeating itself in a short code. So are crystals fractals? Uh, in, there is a question in chat. Let us do some crystal modeling next uh, and we'll see. Kinda, sorta, not quite. Okay, so for this one, get your favorite scissors. Yay? Okay. Uh, mine are big, shiny and uh, from Italy. So my favorite ones, very, uh, very strong because I, we will be cutting layers of paper. So get your piece of paper. And first thing we do, uh, most papers are uh, squarish. So we are going to turn it into a square first. And there is a trick to it. And the trick is to fold it sideways like this. If you fold it sideways like that, the top comes to the side, of course, and they will line up nicely. If you line them up nicely, help your children, please, if they need to. Uh, that children help your grown-ups if they need your help. Okay. <laughs> and so see how now 
this two, two layers are here and the flap is not. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off that flap entirely. And the shape I'll get will be square. Not a shape you see a lot in nature, but just you wait. <laughs> okay. So uh, that is a very human engineering shape. It is real. You see it everywhere in your room. If you look around, you see it everywhere. And you see it very rarely in nature, but some crystals are that for a reason. Salt. Any salt crystal is squarish, pretty much. So, well, sideways. It's three-dimensional, of course. Okay, be in nature. Nothing is flat in nature like this. It's all three-dimensional. Okay. So now you have that, I hope. Yeah? All good? Have a triangle? And what we will do with that triangle that's secretly a square, <laughs> okay, is fold it sideways again through the middle and make a smaller triangle. Okay. And that smaller triangle now has layers. Um, you can guess how many layers or you can check how many layers. Some people like, it's an interesting choice. Some people like to guess first and then check. And some are like, I am an experimental mathematician. I am going to open it up and count. Okay, go, you do you. It's a choice. So there are flaps and I'm opening and counting and what I count are one, two, three, four of those layers so far. Now, I know I can cut four layers with my big scissors. If you have smaller scissors or child safe scissors, you may stop at this point. But if you have uh, more power in your hands or want a challenge, uh, let's fold it one more time also through, through the middle. So I'm going to fold it like this. And then um, I am going to cut shapes out, out of the sides, out of the bottom, out of the corners. I will, I'm not going to cut all the way through, um, but uh, I'll make my edges interesting. That's what I'll do. So um, I'll cut some shape out of this corner here. A triangle, that's very easy to cut. A cut and the cut. I, it's also not very difficult to cut kind of half a circle. You go in a loop. It's, um, so you can combine, you can put a shape on top of the shape. Uh, so I just cut two triangles out on top of my semicircle. And I will see what happens. So I like to cut off corners and you can cut a weird world shape that doesn't look like anything whatsoever too. I'm going to cut this tentacle thing like an octopus has maybe, but it's fantastical too. Okay. I'll make it, I'll make it um, bifurcated at the end. Here. That's a word, a long one. <laughs> okay. Bifurcate, it's like bicycle and um, bipedal. Uh, bi means to bifurcate, means split into. Okay. And then once you are good and done around all the sides and edges, you may be ready to open it. Now, this doesn't look like much so far. Look at this. It's just like this weird shape. And I'm going to use a back into it so you can see it a bit better. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, what what you'll see though, when once I open it, it, it becomes pretty. And if you cut too much, it may come apart into several parts. That's beautiful too. You can make a garland. It's an interesting, uh, some people will have one shape. Some people will have several, so we'll see. Ready for me to open it? Okay, so I'm going to open it. 
and you'll see um, and you can open yours. It's a special moment where beauty suddenly appears out of not much. Uh, okay, so that's the line symmetry we started from uh, with the butterflies and uh, bugs and uh, at the beginning. And then more symmetry happens and more symmetry happens. And here is the thing. So, Kerry, I'm going to highlight your spotlight. Uh, okay, there we go. Can you talk about yours? What do you see? So I see, I, I cut the corner and that made that beautiful star right in the center. And then I made some worms and they turned into even bigger worms, which really was pretty delightful. Um, and then these were kind of like little, um, like bug heads with antennas and they turned into, I would say they're more like caterpillars now, or maybe, maybe maggots, fly larvae. So, um, yeah, I am very pleased with how mine turned out. Oh, but Miranda says I have thorn spiders on it. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's really interesting to work mustaches okay and you can use the little things that fall out as your bonus uh, art so you can use that for your mustache if you this want my to. thorn spite my thorn spiders <laughs> okay right on i had the mountains or something you can have a little mustache thing my yes. mustaches here yeah there we go <laughs> okay uh Who'd like to share their creation? Raise your hand or put something in chat and we will spotlight you. Oh, you go. Hugo. Hugo's gonna show us all up here. I can share two that I've just made. In honor to Backfest, I made two. One that is a simple one that is with four. Ooh. Ooh. Four flies. What do you like yeah. about this one? That is big and it's easy to cut. <laughs> <laughs> because the second one, that was the complicated one, is with 24 small flies. Oh, oh. goodness, Hugo. <laughs> Look at those flies. You kept folding and folding, didn't you? Yeah. And yeah, them all. that was not easy to cut, was it? No. <laughs> You you had to use uh, all your uh, strengths probably. Yeah, actually, I use like this is small. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, powerful. Okay. And we used to have a lady who would do um, Sharon Schnitt, which is paper cutting art, and she would do bug art and show it at Bug Fest a few years ago. Okay. That was very cool. Thank you for sharing. Yay! You're very welcome. <laughs> Hugo. Uh, so how is it, did you, did you design that pattern? Yeah, actually that you okay, can. Okay, well, they, people want to know where to, well, we'll we can send that, maybe Hugo can uh, put it, put, put together something and we can send that out to everyone afterwards. So um, what I, what I like to, to do is um, once you fold the paper, you can trace any picture on it, really. You can try the whole bug or you can try half the bug like we did with, at the beginning and see what comes out. So you can use any clip art or any picture uh, and uh, together with the folded paper, uh, this uh, happens. And an another interesting choice here is um, some people like to see creatures in here and um, uh, something does it re does it remind you of something basically that's a question so this look a little bit like ticks to me and this look like um antenna um some uh maybe crab uh, uh, claws yeah but some people do not want to see things and say no these are abstract shapes and that's an interesting choice too so some, you can ask your children, would you like to see shapes in it or would you like to, for it to stay abstract? 
And that is, of course, um, a very valid choice too. Okay, I'd like to make a point. And the point I'd like to make is, did we make realistic things? Like, these are, of course, snowflakes, but did we make realistic snowflakes now? Okay, let me Google snowflake photo so we can look at beautiful things. Uh, let me search for that. So here are some snowflakes. And as you can see, they are gorgeous and they have this six side structure. This one is not six side, so I do not know one different ones. But um, snowflake. So there, there was this one photographer who photographed a lot of them and made uh, kind of systematic uh, arrangements out of them called Snowflake Bentley. <laughs> okay, um, so if we compare the snowflakes to ours, we notice something. Uh, well, this has four sides. And the real snowflake, of course, has six or three sometimes. And that's because of how the water molecule is made. So if you if you look at the um, water molecule, it has a certain angle to it. And when the crystals are formed, you see that thing? Uh, well, that's a model, but still, if you form a water crystal, it it's always that shape, the hex, the triangular and hex shape. So you could not make water crystals model by folding paper in two and in two and in two again, because that makes two, four, eight, and never six. So that's not very realistic for the crystals. And yet, um, we are out. Uh, we are almost out of time. So I'm going to um, make this connection to the crystals that people asked about and um, then leave you with a toy where you can, it's an interactive toy that I will put in chat and where we can make crystals realistic or not, uh, but uh, this, this type of symmetry, the radial or rotational symmetry is what makes crystals. So it's not, it, it can, uh, it may or may not be fractal but it's a crystal symmetry structure and it's in some animals like starfish and so on. So this is a toy that is similar to what we just did with paper, a different kind of model, a virtual model, and you can draw like this. I use my mouse uh, to make a line and the mirroring in the software makes the lines symmetric. It also adds uh, some random flame, it's called, that's, that shape. And that's very meditative. And I just like to look at it and to relax with it sometimes. Make art that is similar to what we see in nature, or sometimes different. I collected relaxing activities for today. So uh, people feel differently about them, but I hope some of you felt relaxed and some um, excite, excited and some other good feelings largely. And uh, you can uh, yes, you can save from that program and uh, do art, uh, do other artistic things with it. So um, we did more uh, activities uh, and I can stay for some questions if you have any, or we can uh, relax and keep meditating elsewhere as well. So if anybody has questions, please print the or put them in the chat. 
Um, this has been so much fun. I, um, it's, I feel really, I feel, um, really proud of my creations and I hope everybody else does too, except for my, except for my robber fly. He, he turned out really tiny, but I really liked my, um, my triangle and, uh, and my snowflake too. So that was a lot of fun. So Dr. Maria, thank you so much for doing this activity with us. It's been really fun. Um, so this is our last program of Bug Fest, um, our last formal program. We do have the, the porch light party tonight. So starting at eight o'clock, you can tune in to Facebook and we, oh, um, Hayden wants to show us his fractal. Please highlight it. Okay, that's beautiful. So, um, some, uh, there was a question in chat if there are books uh, for more math activities for children. And I'm going to put the link to where our books are and these activities come from. Every one of them is Creative Commons. You can go and get the PDF at name your price, including zero. And especially right now, it's very important with people um, who need supplies. So please uh, go for it. So, um, so the, there was a question in, uh, in chat uh, about uh, books. And again, please get our stuff. That's what it's for. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, please send us your creations to, to Natural Math. There is a contact form on the site. If you want to chat about mathematics or life, the universe, and everything, uh, anytime. And uh, if, you, uh, if you want to... Um, keep doing this in some shape and form. Let's see what we can, uh, what adventures we can do together. Absolutely. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Let me, let's see here. I, um, as I said, it's the last program of BugFest, last chance, get to order your shirt, bugfest.org. You can renew your membership or join today, get one for free. Um, thank you to Terminex and BASF, our sponsors. Um, I want everybody to go to the chalk art page at bugfest.org because we have our chalk artist is downtown at the museum doing the amazing chalk. And you have got to check out that page to see what he has drawn today. So my favorite is a stock eyed fly. It's so fabulous. Um, so please just go and check that out and check out, we've been collecting all of your chalk art as well and putting them in that page. So please check it out and look at all the creations. There's some just wonderful things in there. Um, I'm really impressed with, with your talent um, of, these, of this, these chalk masterpieces. Um, and so I hope to see you at the porch light party at eight o'clock. I've got my husband hung, hung the sheets up <laughs> today. So we're gonna flip those lights on and see what we can get. So thank you so much, everyone. It has been an absolutely fantastic week. I'm so glad you could share it with us today. So, And thank you fun. so much for organizing this. You've been wonderful, and this is such a gift to have. Thank you. It's been fantastic. Oh, yes, Gary and the team, yeah, big hand to, to, to all the <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Miranda said, and it's a good point, we also have the Bugfest zine, which is a collection of art. And you can submit something for the zine. If you go to the other fun stuff tab at bugfest.org, um, you can submit something. So we'll be putting that together and sharing it with everyone after the event. So thank you. Have a great rest of your weekend.